Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com and today we're going to be taking a look at a lot of misconceptions regarding scopes. A lot of beginner filmmakers understand scopes, however, there are a lot of misconceptions floating around. So today we're going to be clarifying most of these misconceptions. Let's start. For example, let's take a look at RGB curves. As we all know in RGB curves, this line represents shadows, this line represents highlights, and most people usually try to stretch uh, the image, you know, from the highlights all the way to shadows. However, what if the image you're working with does not have any object that should be super bright, for example? So let's take a look at this image here. Now, clearly, this image has some bright objects to the right, and uh, her face is pretty bright here. However, none of the objects objects here should be extremely bright, which means that this image does not have any object that actually should be at 100 brightness here. None of the objects should actually reach the top line. However, uh, the mistake that I usually see a lot of beginner filmmakers do is that they try to stretch the image all the way to the top, regardless of the elements that are present in the image. So as discussed, this image does not have any object that should be pure white. Like for example, there is no uh, sky present in the image here. So I'll use RGB curves. And first I'll start by bringing shadows down. So I'll simply use the curves controller and bring shadows down. And then the mistake that I see a lot of beginners do is that they try to stretch the highlights all the way to the top here. However, as discussed earlier, none of the objects here is so bright to the point where it should reach the top here. Actually, I'll go the other way around. Take a look at the highlights here. I will control the brightest part of the image and bring it down. And note that I left these parts empty. And now in order to add a bit more contrast to the image, I'll simply use the curve. So I'll just bring this to the left a bit and this part here to the right a bit. And this is the image. Note that we got the image to look correct without needing to stretch the image all the way to the top because there are no objects here that requires that. So that was the first misconception. The second misconception is that a lot of filmmakers, or beginning filmmakers at least, think that the RGB channels should absolutely match at the top. Well, that's true if the top is absolute white. However, let's take a look at an example. Notice this image here. To the top right of the image, at the brightest part, we have some areas that are fairly bright, which means that in this image, the highlights in the red channel will always be higher than the highlights in the other channels. That's because of this bright red object here, which means that the absolute highlights in uh, the RGB channels will not match, which is normal here. That is not a problem. You don't always need to uh, make the highlights match in all the channels. So again, let's balance this image. I'll bring the highlights up and then I'll bring the shadows down. And notice this part in the red channel, it's higher than the highlights in the other channels and that's absolutely fine. So always remember that the highlights should not always match. Because what if the image is yellow? What if you're looking to create a yellow image? it's normal for the highlights sometimes not to match. The next misconception is that a lot of filmmakers think that you cannot crush the dark parts in the image. First of all, what does that even mean? What is crushing the dark parts in the image? Well, if you take a look at the scopes, this is the absolute shadows line, and a lot of filmmakers think that you absolutely need to stop at this line and not make the shadows cross this line at all, otherwise you'll be losing data. That's true, You, if you cross this line, you will be losing data, however, sometimes that that might be something you actually want to do. So for example, let's repeat this. Take a look at this image. I actually want to lose some information here and here in order to create a moody image. So I will simply drag the shadows and just keep on dragging to the right until I start losing data here. And this is what I mean by crushing the dark parts. It's basically losing some information in shadows. And then I will simply increase the highlights a bit until I get this moody image. And maybe I'll just adjust the midtones a bit. Remember, at this point, we're discussing art, not science. And, uh, you know, this moody, dark look might be something that you're actually looking for. In that case, it's absolutely fine to crush some of the dark areas. And by the same token, you might actually decide to uh, over-brighten the image, lose some information in the highlights. However, here you might want to use a trick to give it an overexposed look without actually overexposing the image. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at this image. I will first start by bringing the shadows down, and now I want to increase the highlights. However, notice that I will try to increase the highlight using this point in the beginning. So let's take a look at the first example. 
So I'll control this point and keep an eye on these parts here while I bring this point to the left. So I overexposed the image. Now we lost information here and you can see that we crossed the threshold of the bright uh, line here at the top, which means that we lost information. Great. You might want to actually use this look sometimes for special effects or something, but there's a better way of achieving the same look. So I just reset the highlights, but this time, instead of controlling the curve from this point, I will actually be controlling the curve from some point here. So pulling this point to the left instead of this point. So again, take a look at these parts here while I control this point and pull it to the left. Notice that I'm brightening the image. I am absolutely brightening the image. However, what's happening here is that I'm compressing the highlights. Note that the highlights did not really cross the line here. And what's happening is that we're simply compressing the highlights. The difference between these two methods will become very clear once you look at the building in the background. So I just reset everything and just keep an eye on this building here. I'll use the first method by controlling the curve from the top point here, pulling it to the left, and notice that we're losing information in the building. We're actually losing information and it looks very artificial now. The image is very bright, but we lost some information. However, let's bring this point back here and now I'm just going to control it from a point at the bottom here, you know, below this, uh, this top point and pulling it to the left. And notice that no matter how much I pull this point to the left, how much I make the image bright, it looks like there is haze in the image. It, we're not actually losing a lot of information. We can still totally see that there is a building in the background here and actually make out its shape. Again, for comparison, I'll remove this point pull it from the point to the left here and notice how we lost information here in the background, bring this to the right, bring this point to the left here and we're just compressing the highlights and we can brighten the image as much as we want while retaining information here. And that is one of the most impressive things when you're dealing with, with curves uh, in Resolve or any other application. It's this smooth curve that you can create at the top of the curve where the highlights are basically rolling off, allowing you to brighten the image as much as you want while still retaining information in the highlights. The next misconception is a bit weird. I noticed that a lot of beginner filmmakers try to match the RGB uh, curves perfectly. They just keep on looking for the smallest inconsistencies and trying to match them using curves. Well, you don't need to do that. Let me explain why. For example, take a look at the RGB parade. Uh, note that this part is different than this part and actually in the green part is much higher than the others. And again, this part doesn't match this, doesn't match this, they're different. And you don't need to match everything. Well, that's because keep an eye on RGB curves here once I reduce saturation all the way. Note that the curves now match perfectly. Take a look at this part, this part, and this part. They're basically the same curve just presented three times. Well, this shows you that if the channels match, there will be no saturation because they will all have the same value. There will be no variation at that point. So it's normal for the RGB curves to look vastly different from one another and you do not need to keep on matching them using curves. The next misconception is that you can see everything in the RGB parade just by looking at it. Well, uh, in Resolve that is not true. You have to understand that you can change the view in, in some ways that will show you more information. So for example, take a look at this part here. You'll think that you can see everything in this curve. However, I will simply open the menu here and click on Extents. And note that we have a small part that appeared here. It will become more clear once I balance the image. I just balance the image and take a look at this part in the green curve, for example. This shows us the boundaries of the area that actually has information. So these parts here are actually extended all the way to these parts. However, if I open the menu here and uncheck extents, now it seems that there isn't a lot of information here. That is not true. You can see the information here by either opening the menu, clicking on extents, or actually increasing the brightness of the RGB parade. Note in Resolve that you have this controller here that allows you to reduce the brightness or increase the brightness. So notice that if the brightness is reduced, you will think that there are some parts that will appear like they do not have information. However, I can increase the brightness of parade and use extents in order to see everything in the parade. The next misconception have been discussed before, but let's repeat it one more time in this video because it's important. A lot of filmmakers think that it's normal that when you uh, control a particular channel, 
that the other channels will be affected in the parade. So for example, take a look at the parade here and notice what will happen to the blue channel once I reduce the red channel. So I'll simply reduce the highlights in the red channel and notice that controlling the red channel affected the blue channel. And by the same token, take a look at the red channel. Once I reduce the blue channel, I'm controlling the red channel. We discussed this in a previous video and what's happening here is that Resolve is trying to maintain the same level of exposure and it's basically trying to make your work easier by preventing you from overexposing the image. However, using LumaMix, you can change this behavior. So this is the LumaMix controller. It's currently at 100. I will reduce it all the way to zero. And now notice what will happen to the blue channel once I start controlling the red channel. So I'll control the red channel down, up, and notice that no matter how much I control the red channel, it's not affecting the blue channel at all. So it's not true that controlling one channel will always be affecting the other channels. Uh, this is a behavior that you can change and resolve. The next misconception is that a lot of filmmakers think that they always need to bring shadows all the way down, you know, to the shadows line as, as much as they can without crossing the line, but they believe that that's very important. However, sometimes the image will not have any objects that should be pure black. So let's take a look at this image here. Notice that there are no objects in this image that should be pure black. Like the darkest part in this image may be this small part here, her hair, and this part, and these should not be pure black. So keep an eye on the shadows here. Once I pull shadows down, notice that I do not need to pull shadows all the way down because the image will start looking unnatural. Like take a look at her hair here. So let's reset and I will bring shadows down only to this point here not crossing this line. And the image looks way more natural than if we pulled shadows all the way down. Again, when you decide to pull shadows down or highlights up, you should always look at the objects in the image. Just take a look at the image and ask yourself, is there any objects in this image that should actually be pure black or pure white? Well, these were the most popular misconceptions that I uh, usually face when I work with uh, starting filmmakers. So uh, just keep these in mind. So I hope you like this. If you like this, please visit us at filmsimplify.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that takes you through every tab in Resolve and it's absolutely free. Uh, so if you're very proficient with color grading, you can learn fusion, you can learn editing. If you know how to use the edit tab, you can learn to use the uh, fair light tab. So Please visit us at filmsimplified.com. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com.